Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Monday Night Muscle with Bob Chicarillo, the voice of professional bodybuilding. And we are talking hot topics, Bob. Hot topics. We are living in some crazy times right now. We know that the internet is all lit up. People coming out from undercover of the COVID-19 thing, locked at home on their computer being keyboard Instagram uh, warriors. And some of the things that we saw, the great Robbie Robinson, the black prince of bodybuilding, he's got a little chip on his shoulder making his post. He seems like he's a little bit either angry or frustrated or fed up. You think? Or a combination of all three, <laughs> which a lot of people in this day and age are. I mean, you're hearing politics, you're hearing racism, you're hearing, you know, all kind of crazy stuff going on. And Robbie seems to seem that he's gotten the short end of the stick even today. I believe Robbie's got to be close to 74 years old. At least. Um, and he's making it very uh, public that he feels that somehow or another there was a racist uh, card being played and some shortcomings on the end of the Weeders and his all the things he did for the Weeders. He doesn't feel like he got his comeuppance after that. You know, I, I, I take exception to a lot of what Robbie said. Um, I knew Joe Weeder for a while. You knew him a lot longer than I did, uh, especially as a young man. You literally came up in California and you were there as, pretty much right out of the yeah, Nationals. 19 years old. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Robbie's position was, he just put out a post the other day, and his point was, uh, that was that he didn't get a contract from Joe Weider because he was black. Yeah. Now, again, knowing Joe Weider as I did, talking to historians of the sport that, that work with Joe Weider mm -hmm. uh, and go way back, uh, now you're talking about, again, 1967, all right, the second Mr. Olympia ever, Sergio Oliva, 67, 68, and 69. This guy was representing the brand. Right. Back before it was fashionable. Now, you're talking the late 60s, right, when the Cuban. riots were going on and all that kind of craziness. And yeah. there was black guys on the cover. There was black people under contract. So my position is I don't think that he didn't get a contract from Joe because he was black. Mm -hmm. I don't think he got a contract because he was Robbie. Well, also, I don't know that the contracts that we're talking yeah. about were even being given out back then. We know that Joe worked very close with Arnold. Yeah. That was his golden child. They had small, um, I mean, they weren't like what you came in with. They were small contracts, but they were publication yeah. deals where they'd write an article. I've got issues with Robbie on the cover sure. of, of uh, Muscle and Fitness, which back then, of course, was you know, Muscle Builder, Muscle Power mm -hmm. back in the day. Yeah. But of all sports, i got to be honest, Sean, I, I don't think I've ever seen a sport that had less to do with race and all that stuff than bodybuilding. Yeah, I mean, we, we do cover the gamut. I mean, when you just talk about the Olympia as the yardstick, I mean, we've got a guy from Lebanon as Mr. Olympia. Yeah, right. We've got an Austrian who won seven yeah. times from Austria. We have an Englishman that won from England, uh, a Cuban that won three times from Cuba. And, of course, we've got a few Americans scattered in there. Um, that doesn't say that racism isn't prevalent in all aspects of life. I mean, of it is. I mean, of depending on where you come from. Of course, the Weeder brothers are two Jewish guys that came yeah. up in poverty out in Canada. I think they're probably more rich than they were poor throughout their up coming up, but they also made it available and possible for people to create careers, establish uh, uh, identities, and also make them world recognizable to the point where they could branch off and make money independent. Now, that being said, I don't think it's fair to point the finger at those two guys who, if we're talking about racism, no. those aren't the guys you want to point the finger at. Uh, when it comes down to marketing and publicity, you, you got to remember the mindset of maybe where Robbie comes from and the time that he came up. He came up in Florida, Tallahassee, Florida, an ex-military guy. Very dark skin, yeah. um, where the cornrows, yeah. the famous cornrows, which he made fashionable, and we would put them in the magazines wearing them. Had the tattered tank top, and was very notoriously well, famous you, for the, the the curl machine yeah, with his biceps. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at the history, yeah, I mean Leroy Colbert, first ran, guy with twenty inch arms, first guy with twenty inch arms, ran Joe Weider's operation out mm -hmm. of New York, if I'm not mistaken. And Ricky Wayne for Flex Rick magazine Wayne was the again, editor in chief. Uh, was the main guy at Flex Magazine. And yeah, I have a hard time. I have a hard time siding with Robbie on the race card when it comes to that now but I'm saying internally the mindset when you got to watch a guy like Arnold who you came up with some of the guys that you were better than coming up with getting cover shots getting more publicity um, and maybe he just didn't feel like he got his 40 acres in a mule by comparison to what Franco Colombo some of the other guys got because he was always told he was well, much better you've known Robbie many many years mm -hmm. he, and he always seemed like he had a chip on his shoulder wait going way back into that whole obscure story and we can get into detail on another story and uh, show on that you know with that whole thing with the Joe Eater statue and he claims he stole his body and well, Joe, yeah I mean Joe got, was doing that pose in yeah. the 1940s bro I understand but the actual bust of Joe is Robbie Robinson's body now that being said Robbie had so. to, Robbie had to sign off on it Peter McGough would know I think we'll, we'll get the facts but I do know that Robbie is of the opinion that that's him. Now, if he's of the opinion that that's his bust, that bust is worldwide famous. It's like the Nike sure. swoosh. 
How do you put a monetary value on that one pose? Well, let's break it down. First of all, any bodybuilder, 99.9% of bodybuilders on this earth in this pose look exactly the same. Yeah. This looks exactly the same. I don't care who you are. Okay, number one. Two. But and there's I, no and copyright I, to the pose. No. It's not like music. And I will bring this in, <laughs> in in a future episode of Monday Night Muscle to prove my point. All right. As always, my friend, I come stacked yes. with facts. I actually have the muscle and fitness cover with Joe e- with the bust of Joe Eater on the cover. Mm-hmm. Okay, on the inside of it. And it's funny. Before photoshopping was. Oh yeah, on. this is this is an actual. You know, it was 1978 or something like that. Like I said, I'll, I'll bring it in so I can we can share it. On the inside, which and I didn't see this for years because as always, you don't read all the articles. And I read a lot and I flip through and look at the picture. You know, the whole thing. But I actually read the article. There's a whole article in there about. Uh, the commissioning of the statue being made. The sculpt- and we didn't know it was going to be famous at the time. Correct, no, right? This is, so the actual sculptor, they have pictures of the sculptor in there. It's, it's a very good, I'll forward it to you. Yep. Um, in the article, it states how they were in there and they were talking about commissioning, putting this bus together and this and that. Keep in mind now, the picture of the bus is on the cover. Mm-hmm. So clearly it was done earlier. And they talk about Robbie comes into the office at some point. So he's probably under contract at that time, oddly enough. He comes in, and he's coming by, and Joe calls him in, introduces him to the sculptor. Right. And the sculptor says, oh, man, I would love to do a sculpture with him. And that's when Robbie had the fro going and all that. And he's like, man, he would look great. And I'd, I know exactly what I would do. I would have it, like, real dark, and I would just have the, he had the uh, earring yeah, going, the, earring, the, the hoop right. earring. Mm-hmm. He said, I would just leave the hoop earring gold. Yeah. And he thought that would be a cool look. Now, what does that tell us? Well, it tells me they didn't commission Robbie all right, to, to, to sit in and model for this, this bus that they were going to do with Joe, mm-hmm. they just met Robbie. I mean, it's right there in the article. So it, it's a, the, the time frame doesn't really match up, Sean, with what yeah. Robbie's saying. Maybe that's his version of, you know. Yeah. He, well, it, we'll never know the true b- version. I mean, both the weeders are dead, and we only have Robbie's version. i got to imagine for Robbie to be in the shadow of someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger and someone that was an inferior bodybuilder sure. in the form of Franco Colombo, the sidekick, sure. um, and then feel like he was not being exposed to the same level of success, which might have cost him a little bit of money here and there. But Robbie was a guy that competed 60s, 70s, yeah, yeah. 80s. Yeah. All the way into the 90s. I remember Robbie Robinson. He looked was, good. He wasn't the first Masters Olympia winner? He was a, right? Yes, he was. He actually yeah. beat uh, Lou Ferrigno. Be, well, and and let me, let, let's hang on. Let's think on 1994. that. 1994. Ferrigno is, is, is Joe Weider's boy. Joe Weider is the godfather of Ferrigno's kids. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So, him and, I mean, listen, Arnold's Arnold. Okay, we all know that was the golden you know, ticket. But Lou was right there. Come on, right. incredible halt, like I say, that, you know, that he's part of the family. Making the comeback. If they wanted to give it to, and Lou was in great shape at that show. And I got to tell you, Lou was under a very big contract making a comeback Correct. that Robbie was not. So if there was really any racism involved, especially from the Weeders, you don't think they could have given that to Lou and nobody would have batted an yeah, eye? I mean, I think where Robbie's coming from is a different place of anger. Look, we're living in some horrible times in terms of the climate of racism. True. And the mere thought of certain scenarios and videos and conversations can really stir you up on the inside. I don't pretend to know what all is going on in Robbie Robinson's head, being a military vet, growing up black in right. the South, um, and being 74 years old and still feeling like he didn't get the Is it fair just share. old sour grape, Sean? Listen, there's nothing more racist than an old black man. I can tell you <laughs> Chris that. Chris Rock said it best. But I can tell you, <laughs> so, I understand. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a little bit misdirected when it comes down to singling out the weeders. And I don't think you can point the finger at the industry. I got to tell you, not for nothing, I feel like the success I had as a model, a cover guy yeah. in, in the magazines, came as a direct result of my ambition. Yeah, I, I lived not too far from where the Weeder headquarters were. I made it a, a, a conscious decision that when I was in shape to go down there, get interviewed for Flex and Muscle and Fitness, and do the business. I filled in on photo shoots yeah, for guys that yeah. refused to shoot. I did articles. I had a call on my entire career. Uh, I, I don't. That's not Robbie. Robbie's not that guy that wants to go out and be in front of the camera. And for that, it didn't serve him very well. A lot of looking the, back, a lot of the guys have been their own worst short, enemies short over term. the years. Like yes. you said, they don't show up for shoots. I knew guys back in the old days, and I won't put particular names out there, but some of these guys were some of the top bodybuilders in the world. Mm-hmm. And this is back when they had the mail order business. Remember, they, they put you in the, you know, the, like your ad, your uh, courses, sure. get big arms, get big chest, you know, you mail in for the court. And this is what Joe gave them as an opportunity to make money. Right. Listen, I'll put your ad in there. You know, you guys doing the photo shoots for me. I'll give you some space and muscle. And, you know, that was the premiere. Well, yeah. We saw uh, that with Robbie with the Master Blaster. Correct. Yeah, thing. I mean, I saw that ad yeah. for years. Again, I, I had cover shots with Robbie. Yeah. He was one of my favorite bodybuilders. Yeah. But I think it's a little disingenuous to chalk everything up to, well, he didn't give me a contract because I'm black. Then yeah. he even went on to say that when they were on the circuit, 
that he took a couple of runner-ups, so he actually got less money than Rich Gasperi got for running for runner-ups. Yeah, I mean, now, a, that I find hard to believe. There are times where the money, the prize money, were changing. There were times when the athletes didn't get all their prize money. I, me I remember a couple of athletes won pro shows and didn't get paid. Oh yeah, um, and so, that was and that was very true. But and that I, was in my time. I, I don't believe for a minute that all, under all the same circumstances that they paid Robbie less money. Mm -hmm to take a second place and they paid Rich Gasperi right. or anybody else. Like, Maybe it was just a different show that had less prize yeah, money. I think everyone's opinion about our journey through the industry is different. We don't know that, you know, some of these bodybuilders have managers. I know Lee Labrada was very good friends with Tom Dieters at Muscle yeah, Fitness, yeah, Tom Dieters, and it yeah. served him well publicity-wise. Look, Corey Everson's husband was Jeff Everson, the editor-in-chief of Muscle and Fitness, so she got the lion's share of publicity in the magazine. Robbie didn't have an ally. Robbie didn't have a manager, and a lot of things he did on his own. He's very quiet, and he's not a very outspoken person. He only had his physique to market, and if he didn't show up for the photo shoots, and he wasn't doing the articles, naturally, you don't get the big breaks, you don't get the publicity. And then he went to a different federation. That now, didn't help his career either. It did not help his career. But now, we see it all the time now. The only thing that Joe and Ben required back then, again, now we're talking 1970s and early 80s, okay, mm -hmm. was, and, and there was a, not really a fight, I'd say, because the IFBB was clearly in, in charge. They had the Olympia and all the, you know, the history and all that stuff. Um, but they were still going head-to-head -head with NABA, WABA, uh, and any of the alphabet soup, you know, WBBG, Dan Lurie, right, mm -hmm. and all that stuff, which Robbie ended up going to. Now, that was an instant year out. Yeah. Back then, there, there was no come, you know. So I wonder if that stuff was kind of. Yeah. But keep in mind, yeah. we just talked about Robbie coming back in the '90s and winning the first Masters Olympia. Right. That doesn't sound like a racist guy to me. To a let him back in the club after a lifetime ban, mm -hmm. and he was banned twice, if I'm not mistaken, and let back in twice. Right. But then when he was let back in, he gives him the title. Yeah, and the same thing with Serge Nubre. I mean, yeah, you, Serge you have some yeah. federational differences, and and Robbie lived through some rough times, period, yeah. especially through the '60s. And you don't you don't lose that. It's all these emotions are coming back up and yeah. he may be reliving a lot of what was going on in the 60s and some of that persecution is coming out on the internet and uh, I don't understand exactly where it comes from but it cannot be directed at the Weeders and of course uh, I'm hoping Robbie was one of the greatest bodybuilders to ever That's walk the no planet question. and he's going to be a living legend for as long as we live. I mean, Some people need to keep their personal views to themselves <laughs> but that's what social media is for. It's designed for us to have a platform. If you don't like what the man's saying, block, delete, move on. When I turned pro in 2000 finally um, following in your footsteps, you know, only 10 years before that. <laughs> yeah. um, but I listen, I went out, I met with Joe, sat down, I'm going to give you a contract, you know, the, the whole thing, right? The guys, all the guys who had contracts was yourself, Chris Cormier, Paul Dillette, Mike Flex, Wheeler, Flex Wheeler, Mike Christian. Yeah. I mean, I can go right down right. the line, bro. Of, yeah, well, I'm, t I'm on the record as saying the Weeders were far from being racist. They were opportunistic people that gave people a chance to, yeah. like you said, he wouldn't give you a hand out, but he'll give you a hand up, yeah. help up. Yeah. And uh, by giving us the opportunities, we were able to create certain aspects of our lives that serve us all very well today. And I'm sure some people think they should have got more or deserved more or got less, but it's, it's, a, it's a free enterprise. It's capitalism, yeah. 101. And uh, I hope Robbie comes full circle before it's all said and done but again you don't have to follow him you don't have to like what he says but he's entitled to his opinion yep. but that being said we were talking about this year's Mr. Olympia which is coming up November or December the 17th to the 20th and a couple of names that we're trying to figure out where do they fit in this we know who the players are yeah this is we know we know who's who the front runners are and of course we had Brandon Curry here not too long ago he's 100% confident that no matter who shows up he's going to be defending his title and we mentioned James Flex Lewis from Wales coming up from the 212 into the open who has a very good opportunity to walk off and make history being the first guy to win a 212 and an Olympia yeah. and the potential of any one of two guys coming out of retirement that I don't even need to mention their names until they say they're going to come back. So that's going to be an interesting side story at the Olympia because we don't really know, does Brandon have a, a stronghold on that title? Well, I think one of the, the underrated stories we're not really talked about too much right now, Sean, is not who's qualified, but who's not qualified. Right. And there's some big names on there. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just kind of looking down the list of who's automatically qualified, and of course that's going to be Brandon Curry, any former Mr. Olympia, and of Dexter course... Dexter Jackson. Dexter Jackson. Uh, and I would even extend that even though he got a, a quote, invite, I don't think it was, I think it was a formality. Uh, who's James that? Flex Lewis. Who's that? Oh, James got an invite? No, he earned the right to be there. He's won seven two twelve championships. Yeah, but that's he's an automatic. But technically speaking. Yeah, there's no technical. Listen, technically speaking, according to the rules, only former Mr. Olympias 
are automatically qualified for life. Now, he's not a former Mr. Olympia. He's a former 212 Olympia champ. We know the semantics. Now, again, well, would, would anybody not let him in? The guy won seven. Listen, if you're going to contemplate right? letting Kai Green in, yeah. you have to let this guy in on the first ballot. Listen, I wouldn't contemplate letting Kai Green in. I would make Kai qualify because hmm. I think that's what pisses guys off, Sean, is look, at, you got to you got to make your way there, okay? Now, listen, the first year I understand, all right, and then there was all that garbage that went on with him doing the video and crying on the fence and crying foul and all that, and that didn't really go anywhere. Right. All this let his fans down, really. The year after that is when we extended an invite to him. Now, we did that for one reason and one reason only. He was pointing the fingers at the IFBB Pro League uh, for keeping him out, keeping him back, you know, like, like it was some conspiracy. So we gave him an invite mm -hmm. purely to see if he would accept it or not, because and we put it out publicly. On a certain date, you've got a special invite. We were inviting Kai Green to the Olympia. Now the ball was in his court. So right. now he couldn't score a lot of it. What are you going to do? You're going to sign it, or you're not going to sign it. If you don't, it's on you. But don't don't come to the pro league and tell, uh, you know, try to do the the woe was me kind so of story. You're of the opinion no Kai Green, even if he says I want to come in, if or you're saying he's got to qualify. I personally, again, now, now, now again, I wear hats on both sides. Okay, as you know. Would I like to see him as the athlete's rep as, as part of the Olympia and all that stuff? Of, of course I would. I would love to see Kai in there. I'd love to see Phil in there. I'd love to see Dexter and all those guys. Phil's automatically a guy that has a qualification. Right. He, he can go in if he wants to. He, he's, he's earned that. Right. Would I like to see Kai from that standpoint, from a production and the Olympia standpoint? Absolutely. Do I think it's fair to the other guys who are trying to qualify? No. So I would absolutely it, so, make him qualify. So you absolutely give him a deadline on yep. one of the pro qualifiers coming up before the Olympia. Correct. If not, you don't get in. Even though he's That's got... Right. Three or four Arnold Classic titles, three first Olympia runner-up. He has the pedigree. You know what else he got? He, he got a special invite that he didn't take. Okay, So, so he got his shot, Okay, and he decided not to take it. Fair enough. James Flex Lewis? Oh, absolutely. Listen, that's it's not a, even a... Listen, this guy won... I don't care if he won the Mr. Olympia, the, the 212. He won the, uh, he won the Olympia in the okay. 212 division seven times in a row. This guy gets an automatic in any day of the week. And William Bonick, by winning the Arnold Classic, is an automatic qualifier. Correct. Again. Now, again, the, what's the story? Who's not in? There's a whole bunch of guys, Sean, right now, <laughs> who are not qualified for Rolly this. Really, Winkler? I think I think Winkler's on the list again of points. Big Rami. Big Rami is not qualified right now. Uh, Sergio is not. Yeah, he's qualified. He's only done one show. He's got right. fifth place at the Arnold now, Classic. Steve it's a Kuklo. It's, it's a uh, Steve Kuklo was not qualified. Sixth place last year. Six was great and, okay. and a beautiful fi uh, finish for Steve. Mm -hmm. um, kid's got a, again. He's still right there where he can make it or break it. Cedric. Yeah, Cedric didn't qualify. Listen, if you're not good enough to be in the show, I don't want to see you. I don't want to see a bunch of pace Now, car. Cedric, I believe, we, we talk about um, special invites and stuff. Now, he got one last year, which I thought was absolutely justified. Yeah, and he went on to win over in Japan. Well, and again, over in Romania. everything's got a special so circumstance. he won over in Romania, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, given his, his background, I mean, every, every situation's unique. Do you keep a guy like that? He had military service. Mm -hmm. And I take that into consideration and all that. But not in 2020, you don't take it into consideration. Well, no, consideration. not now. You got it last again, year. Again, you, you got your shot. Now yeah. you got to earn your way back. Mm -hmm. What's different this year, as everybody knows, is with all this COVID craziness that's going on, mm -hmm. um, we don't really know how many shows are going to be available for these guys to qualify at. Mm -hmm. Because there has been some that have come and gone because you couldn't have it. Right. Depending on where you're from, overseas is still a mess. And we still don't really, they keep moving the goalposts, Sean, on every every month at every uh, place, especially if you're in a, a, a democratic state. No, speaking of democratic, uh, the way I see it, Bob, is if you're not qualified, you don't get in. You'll start making concessions because of this situation. Because then what happens in 2021? You're going to have all these other athletes going, what about me? And why are you letting him in? I mean, you deal with the cards you're dealt. Well, and some of those are going to have to be um, ever-changing because we got to keep moving the goalposts. So when I say we, I mean the Pro League, Jake Wood, Dan Solomon, the Olympia crew. They've got to be able to look at things and go, okay, so there was – Ten shows that were lined up. Mm -hmm. Five of them are already off the table because of the, of the COVID stuff. Mm -hmm. Couldn't actually have shows and things like that. So what do we do? You deal with the best that's left, the ones well, that are qualified. You deal with that, or again, you, you know, we, we do have a little bit of room to move. So there can be some qualifiers as we go. We still got some time, mm -hmm. uh, but I'd love to see uh, some of those shows take place for these guys to be able to battle it out. And let me tell you, those could be some great shows. You talk about Tampa. You talk about Chicago. Uh, you, you talk about, well, New York's probably not going to happen this year. Mm -hmm. uh, New York's a mess right now, but uh, there's San Antonio. Again, yeah, there, but I've always been of the opinion that we have too many people qualifying for this show. It waters it down. I'd rather see fewer guys. Listen, I'd rather see fewer guys. I'd rather see 10 in each division if that's I know all you the prize would, money. Listen, if you're only paying the top 10, I'm all about paying having 10 <laughs> yeah, guys in each division. One, it makes the show faster. Right. Two, it makes it more competitive. The athletes get a better look. I don't like to have 25 guys I've got to sort through to get to the final 10, well, and then 
then break that down to the top six. You and I, as we often see things from two different directions. Black and white, maybe. Black and white. <laughs> Short and tall. Ebony and Ivy. Big and fat. There we go. Wait a minute. Who's There's big a lot of different angles. Yeah. Hey, you're the fat guy. Handsome and, you know. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, but we, we look at things from two different sides on that sure. one. And we have for years, you know, which, which is always fun for us. But I'm of the opinion we need to go completely the opposite way what you're talking about, which mm -hmm. probably means I'm right. Okay? Oh, again. Because what we need is more people qualifying, mm -hmm. not less. And I'll tell you why. Now, the, here's the caveat. Do I want to see 30 guys on stage at the Olympia? No, of course not. But like every other sport on this earth, tennis, golf, bowling, I mean, you know, uh, wrestling, like you, you pick it, okay? They've all got the same format, the Olympics. Right. Everybody and their mother qualifies, okay? Best in the world of, of whatever the respective thing is. Then you've got to make it to the next stage. Semi-finals, you know, the, uh, quarter finals, again, whatever, pick the sport. They keep bringing it down and bringing it down and bringing it down until the best of the best. When we're watching the Olympics, when mm -hmm. Usain Bolt was out there, there's eight lanes. Yeah, you had eight guys. Eight, bro. When I see the Olympia, I want to see 10 guys. That's how and, I'm And that's fine, but you know what? I want to see 10 guys too, but I want to see 40 start. Mm. And then you got to, you listen, you got to get past round one. And listen, you don't put the, the champions out. Listen, if you've won a show, and, you know, and, and we'll debate all this kind of stuff as we go, because I, I do think there's some changes we can look at as, as all things evolve. I think all the winners of a pro you show could qualify. I, you qualify anybody sure. and their mother, okay, mm -hmm. to, to, to uh, get to the, quote, Olympia. Now, what do we Winners keep, only. What do we keep hollowed, okay? The winners only, yeah. I'm all for it. They get an automatic pass in the round, too. Okay. But there should be other ways to qualify that you get there, but you got to earn your way to round two. To round three, and then ultimately the hollowed ground, and that's why we is keep the top it. Ten. We keep it sacred. Is the top ten. Yes. So you don't you don't water down the sport. You don't water down the title by saying, well, everybody makes it to the Olympia. That's like saying, well, everybody makes it to the Olympics. It's like, mm -hmm. well, no, not everybody makes it to the finals. Right. There's eight guys that make it to the finals, and they're running for the gold. Mm -hmm. You know, for that gold, silver, and bronze. And that's what I'd like to see in bodybuilding down the road. Is you know what we offer more opportunity. Because that opens up a whole lot more, Sean. It opens up more people to qualify, more people to go on their social media platforms, right? More people to say, hey, man, I'm going to my first Olympia. And guess who's going? Mom, dad, sis, and bro are going to watch them. Mm -hmm. And their people are coming. And their people are going to the expo. Which is what prejudging is for. So Correct. the process of elimination right. takes place at prejudging. At the finals, I just want to see the best of what's left. We agree on and that. And I want to see everyone walk away with a paycheck. But we're going to find out how that dynamic plays out as we move towards the Mr. Olympia weekend. This will be the 56th year for the Joe Weider Mr. Olympia Championships. And of course, that was 1965 when Bob and I see. were born. 56 We're trying year. to do the math. We still well, haven't been able to but figure it out. we're gonna be 55 this year. <laughs> we were born the same year as the Olympias. So how is this the 56th year, but we're only gonna be 55? We're gonna leave this with the audience to figure oh, that out. It's man. the 56th anniversary of the Joe Weider Mr. Olympia Weekend Championships, brought to you by Jake Woods and company, and along with Dan Solomon, our new promoter. And uh, we also have uh, Tamer L. Gundy working on the amateur and side. And Tim Gardner. And Tim Gardner working on the expo side. Lots yeah. of things coming down the pipe in Las Vegas. Bob will be there rocking the mic. I'll be there on behalf of Digital Muscle bringing you all the action backstage and in front of the audience for our 56th Joe Weider Mr. Olympia Weekend. Check out, get your tickets at MrOlympia.com. For Monday Night Muscle, Bob Chick, I'm Sean Ray.